We're in our series, which is a healthy life series, and we started we started to talk about the, the first off of losing weight and all this other stuff, but about relationships, and, and that relationship is something that we've got to have. If you don't have a, a healthy relationship, your life is really out of balance because it's all about you. Somebody say, it's about me. And see, when it's all about you, it's not about the kingdom. It's not about the things in which God wants to do because it's not. It's all about Him. And if we serve Him, and in serving Him, we serve others. Scripture actually leads us to, as we're serving others, that He calls that ministering unto the Lord. And if we're ministering unto God, His every gift and everything that we need is at our disposal. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it? Well, then we got into self-control, and we started to see how that was. And Dominic did a great job on that. And, and just tell us that we need some self-control. Somebody say, I need self-control. Because Turkey Day, which means all the good fixings. Don't look at me that way. See, now some of you are backing up, aren't you? No, by the way, I don't want to repent for that, you know, because that means i got to think about what I'm eating. Well, I'm going to think about it, too. Think about how I can get another one out of side my, my son's hand. Well, anyway, we'll not go there. But it's been really good because today is the day I want to talk about the thing that's going to build a relationship, and that's prayer. Prayer, without prayer, we can't build a relationship. Now, we can pray in, in so many different fashions, in so many different ways, but God's put a word on my heart today. And this word is to really open up. So I want to just have a couple of questions, three questions maybe focusing, flowing through your mind as I go through this. One is why do we pray? So the question for you is, why do you pray? Why do you pray? The third one, how do we, or second one, I'm sorry, how do we pray? How do we pray? And then the third one, do you see fruits, results in your prayers? Because see, a lot of times it's always about us. Somebody say about us. And it's, it, it just can't be about us. I hear people all the time, and, and I get this question. Why do we have to pray if God's sovereign? If God knows what's going to happen and he's dictating everything, even the government upon his shoulders, why do we got to pray? Well, it's pretty awesome because prayer is mentioned 650 times in the Bible. 450 recorded answers to those prayers. 25 times, just 25 times, is it recorded that Jesus prayed. That's just 25 times. And I can imagine, just as it says, if, if it, everything would have been recorded, the things that Jesus did, there would not be space big enough to handle to write it all down. Now, that's our Jesus, right? And, and, and aren't we supposed to be like Jesus? Aren't we supposed to just mimic him and look like him and smell like him and well, some of you smell like the other side of him, but, you know, it, it's, we all want to be like Jesus. Everything, as it tells us in Romans chapter 8, everything will only work out good for us because we've been predestined, but we've been called. So we've got to walk according to this calling. We can't go out and just do whatever we want to do and think that God's going to make that work out right. He won't. He's to redeem everything, but we need to walk in where he's called us. Prayer is the lifeline to our relationships. It really, really is. So it's pretty awesome because when I was talking and I was trying to figure out how do I describe prayer, right? Um, the, the, the drums, which we're going to build a drum cage, y'all, just in case some of you are going like, man, the drums are just like overwhelming. They are. I got two guys that play drums, well, three guys that play drums, but two of them play like they're just no tomorrow. They just love Jesus. And honestly, it's not that they're bad. They love Jesus so much that that's how they worship. Somebody say worship. And see, they're so, and if you get to know Chad and Lucas, you find out they're extreme people. They're guys that are just absolutely going like, oh, Lord, you really saved that one. There's hope for me. Yeah. They are so on fire for God. They will burn and burn and burn and burn for Jesus. Man, no matter how much water you put on them, it might only keep them down a little bit. But I'm telling you right now, that little bit of smoke's going to produce a, just a, a flash of a spark of fire. But prayer does this. In the midst of it, as we're trying to talk to God, we get all these. Anybody ever have any kind of like distractions in your life? Anybody? Oh, I guess just some of you. Some of you guys are way up there now, right? No distractions here, dude. Do you not see how godly I am? Yeah. God prays to me and asks me what time to rise the sun. Really? Yeah. I know some pastors, well, so-called pastors that think that. Anyway, so prayer does this. In the midst of everything, when you're trying to listen to where I'm coming from, it's kind of hard, right? So you're praying, trying to figure out, but wait a minute, you got a direction you got to go to. 
There's something in your life that's trying to lead you. God's trying to speak to you. You need to find out an answer. You need to know, is this the right person for you to marry? Is this the church to be along with? You need to also know exactly what it is that God's speaking to you. How do I get over this? Anybody ever been there? How do I get over this? God, if only you would speak to me. But in the whole humdrum of the world, we're getting all this. We're letting everybody else try to tell us what to do. Yeah, right? And God's trying to speak to us. And as much as God's trying to speak, he starts to get over. But in the midst of everything, prayer gets rid of that sound. And it now focuses you in to be able to hear my voice. But you hear fathers. And then in the midst of that, you'll hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And he'll lead you. In the midst where you hear all of these other things, he wants to bring it down to this. Because we can't hear him. We can't take directions if we have all these other voices. All these other things that's trying to push us and pull us aside. When God wants us to understand who he is within us, what he's trying to do. So I want us to go, if you will, just go with me really quick to Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to touch just a few things. I'm not going to keep you long. Now that means I'm going to be here. We're going to be here till 2. Some of you don't care, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. We're good. We're good. Matthew chapter 6. I like doing those kind of things. Make a noise. I'm good at making noise. Ask my wife. Yeah. I so some of you guys saw the picture that my daughter took of me and put on Facebook when we was in Wally Mart. I saw this because I'm a big kind of crazy. You know, Tabby's into the ugly sweaters. I'm into those ugly, crazy jackets kind of thing. You know what I mean? I like to go into stores and if I find a flashy one, I'll put it on and Kim, pew, she bolts the opposite direction. We was in one not too long ago, and there was an orange one, and I put it on, and she's like, oh, honey. She says, Here's what she does. When we go into the men's section, she goes that way. She knows I'm going this direction when I find something flashy. So I went there. I put this orange one on, and she's going. I said, what do you think? She said, no, it's not going to work. I said, yo, miss. And this lady that was working there, I had her on my side. She was eating out of my hand. She's like, that's good. You look good. I said, honey, see? She thinks I should wear it. She said, no, uh-uh. So then I tried another one on. It was like plaid, right? Almost looked like, well, anyway. I put it on, and it looked kind of good, and Kim was like, nope, that ain't working either. Then I found a red one. Yeah. It looked good. See, I look good in any. I look good in orange, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. See, I always do. Kim said, not orange. I'm wearing sort of like an orange one now, right? Looks good. Shows off my head and my color, right? Yeah. It goes with my eyes. Yeah, see, it goes good, right? So then we, you know, we, we went to, we were up Pennsylvania, I tried this jacket on, and, and some of you got a picture of that, and it was all these, this, this like presents and Santa Claus and all this other stuff. It was, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, I wanted it. And Kim was like, uh-uh, we're at Walmart. Of course, we're up in Pennsylvania, and, and some of the people don't really remember us. Some of us do, though. And she's trying to get the other way, and I'm chasing her, honey, honey, this is what I want for Christmas. And she's like, oh, my gosh. So, we, you know, and we, so me and Kendra, we went to, to Walmart. And by the way, I want, to, I want to throw this out there. Church, we provided, I'm not going to tell you how many, but we provided a bunch of Thanksgiving dinners this year for people. I mean, out of your giving. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. That's really good. Out of your giving is able to take care of that. And I mean full Thanksgiving dinners. So me and Kendra was in there. We were going through, and we were buying this stuff up. And I'm saying, we need to get this. We need to get that. And she's like, okay. And then it, we, I see this jacket. Yeah, you know, I got those radars. Anybody ever know those radars? You know, it's one of those things where it goes ding, 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 when something excites you. Anybody ever do? Come on, y'all, help me out here. Don't think you don't leave me hanging. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I can do it all myself. Thank you, Jesus. He inside me. So we're, we're walking there, and I'm pushing the cards. I'm pushing the card. I went, do, 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 do. I look over at Kendra. She said, no, Dad. I walk over and I seen this red one. I thought, oh, I grabbed it. Was you know got the right size and when I was like, I gotta try this on. And I looked over and I saw a blue one. I said, oh, I like this one too. And then I saw that one with the package. Looked like gift wrap. I said, oh, I gotta put it on. And it said, oh snap, right? Carrie's favorite words. But I got a gingerbread, you know. I put it on, right? Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah. Now tell me I don't look good. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. See, I want to get it so I can preach my sermon series out of it. Don't you think? Right? Unwrap me, baby. I think that would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's just good. And then, like I said, they had to have this one. I think we need to get them for everybody. I do. I think that everybody, especially the praise team, should wear it. Right? Yeah. Who's with me? <laughs> Why are they all, all the praise team except for Lucas wanting to leave? Randy's like, uh-uh, ain't happening, right? Yeah, I think you could go do a good with a snowman, dude. You would look good up there. Snowman. Snowman, Frosty the Snow Dude. Anyway, anyway, I know. We're just rearing us back. So with all that, Kinder was praying that nobody would see us. <laughs> but, you know, I just sort of overtook that. Those are the distractions, though, because we were so busy about this that I saw that, then it just sort of took me away. But we got ourselves lined back up again. And this is what prayer is about. We have got to know the person we're in relationship with. And our life can only be healthy if Christ is the center. Somebody say center of our life. If you make him first, he will be jockeyed out of the place. Now, I know some of you are like, what? I just well, I, yeah, I, I want, I go through this. I think I need to do this again today. We have to understand who we're praying to. We understand why we're praying and if we're going to get results, right? So I'm going to use just an illustration to you because some of you, every time I do this, some people say, well, that was kind of crazy, but it's true. Have you ever heard of put Jesus first and it ends up like when you put Jesus first, he sort of ends up last? Has that ever happened? Well, can I show you what happens with that? Can I? Greg, come on up here. Yeah. Mark, come on up here. Come on. Marie, come on up here. All right, let me give me one more. Come on, Scotty. Let's use you up here. Come on. I'm a coming. <laughs> All right, so here's what I wait, can everybody see him? All right, here's where, what I want to want to do. We're going to say I'm not going to use him because he's already puffed up in the air. I'm going to use you. Come here. We're going to say that she's God, right? So you're really not. Right. Just so that you know. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> but we're just going to say she's God, and we're going to place her first. But then we turn around in the midst of God. We decide to get married. So I'm going to use him. I don't want to use you. We're going to use him and say he's the spouse. The only reason I used him is because he's got, he could go either or. Um, so, no. no, I don't mean that. You know what I mean. I just, anyway. <laughs> Somebody go, but um, bump. Okay, all right. So here's our spouse. And then we got to deal with that. And then, then here comes our kids. And I use this because of the, the well, yeah, yeah. About right where the, well, anyway, we'll go there. And then we come along with our job. Fitz, the owner of a job. There we go. So in the midst of this, we're sitting here. We're serving God with everything we want, with everything we can. And then our spouse says, you know what? Instead of you doing what you're doing, you know, and I know you get time with God, I want you today. Somebody say, I want you today. So what ends up happening is the spouse, come here, God. The spouse takes over first place because God's been shuffled to second. Has that ever happened? Oh, don't raise your hand. So then in the midst of this, the kids. Oh, we got to do something with kids. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas, right? So we got to do something for our kids. And out of that, God's like, wait a minute, I need to do something with you. But, but the kids are like, I need to take care of us because your spouse says, no, we need to do this. So now God gets jockeyed again, and now God comes in. So now you're wondering why you can't hear from him a little bit. It's like harder for you to hear the voice of God. And then here comes your job, because now in order to provide for the kids and the spouse, your job, the owner of the job is like, I need you home. I need you to work over here. I need you to do this. I need you home. Daddy, I want this. Oh, I need you to work. So now God again gets jockeyed again. And where does he go? Now, I want to throw this at you, because this is the majority of what's happening in Christianity today and in our prayers our prayers will always be about our spouse, our children, and our job, about us. Somebody say us. us. And it's not about God. Now, I know some of you don't agree with that, and that's okay. You know, I, I pray that you get it because you, you might still go to heaven. Um, but, but if we get this, that God is center, somebody say center. center. Then, come here, God, stand right up center, right there. Then now, God says, because I'm coming to God, God, I'd really like to have a spouse. 
So God says, spouse, come into the light. So come on in, overseer spouse. Yeah. Well, you know what? God, me and my spouse would like to have kids. Then spouse says, or God says, come on, kids. But God, you know, I need to have a job to provide for him. So then he comes over there, and, and now I got them all. So see, what, ha- what ends up happening is God is the table. Somebody say table. In which he could put everything else up on top. Some of us sometimes will go past that and we try to seek the things of us and we don't hear from God properly. It's like, oh God, what am I supposed to do? I need to go, ah, I got to provide. Oh Lord, I have no, can I ask you a question? How many people got like abundance of time? Oh, <laughs> but you're, you're leaving though. Yes. Okay. Well, let's go back to this. It, but you, you've got, of course, you're, you, you really don't. God's getting ready to slam you like you ain't never seen. So, so we're going to leave it with that one. So if we said and we walk with God in that right way, Lord, I need to know how to, to worship you, how to support my family through you. So he starts to provide everything I need. And he does it through a spouse that's now on his knees or on her knees. And we're praying together. And then with that, now God's provided seed. Come on, child. Come on. And now we're praying together. Yeah, get on your knees if you can. Yep. And then we're like, okay, God, you know we need a job. So here comes our job. And our job's given us a platform to pray with too. And now we're seeing the kingdom come. Now we're seeing power that now I could properly do it because we got the blessings of God over top of us who's anointing us through. And everybody, not just me, but my spouse and my children and my owner of my boss, they're all hearing it. They're all hearing the good things of God. And now we can do some great stuff because if it's just about us, it won't flow. It won't. You'll get tripped up. God will keep being jockeyed from one to another to another. And I, I, I got to say, okay, guys, you good stuff. Thank you all a hand. They did pretty good, didn't they? I got to say, because honestly, within my heart, we're praying mainly to us and not to God. We're praying about us and not about God. We're praying for us and not for God. So our fruits are not sustainable. They start to fall. Well, the Lord shows us what we must pray and how we do this. And in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 9, he says, that, well, see, no, let's start at verse 6. He says, but when you pray, go into your inner closet. You, uh, go in and close your door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. And when you're praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. So pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now right there he sets up something for us. One of the first things he shows us is that we all must pray. He didn't say just when some of you pray, did he? He didn't just say when you go to the altar and pray with this guy or have the pastors or the elders pray. He said when... Somebody say me. When I pray. When I pray, he said to make sure that... So that's a, that, that's a command for us to pray. All should pray. Every one of us should. And as we do, we see great things. But then he goes on with this that we all know and understand. But now we have to be honest when we pray. We have to come with an honest seeking heart. Not with the heart of make-believe fairy taleism. Not with, with the heart that takes out some of this and twists it and makes it fit us, but with a heart of belief, a heart of who we are. And here's the great thing. He says, when your prayer becomes a private passion and not a public demonstration, I will see you and hear you. It's the heart of the, the person that has, has this private passion in your closed doors when you close that. When you get there, then you will see something greater come about. But we have to do this with the right heart. And it takes us up to some more. He says to go into that secret place. Somebody say secret place. Now this secret place is where we can be honest. 
That secret place isn't a closet. You know, and I love the War Room movie. I do. And actually, in Matthew, he, he spoke to one of my main intercessors that's a great, somebody I've never even met physically, <laughs> but met spiritually by a wrong number. And it was from Greenville, South Carolina, that well, actually from, from Massachusetts that, that moved to Boston, that went to Chicago, that moved, got moved down to South Carolina. And, and she's 78 years old now. And this is all back when she was many, many years. And then she was moved from there all the way down. And she's down here now. So in the midst of, of all of that, it, it, down in Atlanta, she called me and we started praying and we started talking. But some people think that the only way that we could pray is if we're in a closet, if we're in a room. That's not what he talks about. So many people miss out on the greatness of the power of prayer because they'll tell you, don't you pray for me here, you wait till you get home to do it. No, I pray for you right here. I pray for you everywhere. Paul says, pray never ceasing. In other words, let your amens be very few, but let your continuance be always. So there's always like a comma there. Somebody say comma. We have to allow that to, to move us through. So as we go, here's the thing that I need you to get. Some of your, your secret places might be when maybe some of you work out or you're walking down the road. Maybe when you're in a car driving down the road. Some of the, some of the guys' secrets, honestly, are up here when they're playing. Their secret place is, is, is up here. This is their closet. This is where it is. When they start to strum, there's a tie. There's a, a place where God can speak deep into their heart and show them where the things are wrong. Has anybody ever been there? So you, you ever been to that place where God is so tangible, so alive, that he speaks to you on when you've done wrong? See, that's the integrity of the heart. And this is what prayer brings about. Prayer brings about an integrity that can only come from God. It brings about a voice and a recognition of who he is, and it lines us up. This is what he's trying to do. Your prayer closet can be anywhere, absolutely anywhere, that secret place where you can be honest. And then it takes us to another one now. It takes us to where he says, your kingdom come. Oh, this is where we really get honest. Your will be done on earth. Now, I, I want to touch this. That earth is you. His ways, his will in your life. Now, this is where you get honest. This is where you get deeply honest with him. God, I don't want to love these people, but I need to love them. God, I know you told me that I need to read, but I can't read. I hate reading. Come on, get, get honest with me here. God, I don't want to watch this porn, but, uh, but, but, but I am. God, I don't want to get high, but I am. God, I'm lonely, and I feel like you're not there. Lord, I'm supposed to try to make my marriage work out, but I don't want to. I just wish you would come back and send them all to hell, God. Oh, now why y'all looking so high and righteous to me? Tell me that doesn't go through you. It goes through all of us. This is a place where we can get so close to God and we can say, oh dear Lord, I know that this is not the way I'm supposed to be. Come in and change me. Lord, I'm a liar. and I can't help it. It's all that I do is produce lies. I'm a manipulator. And Lord, all I do is manipulate people for me. I even manipulate using you, God, to get things from you. Oh, God, come into my heart. Lord, I don't care if there's people who got Thanksgiving dinners or not. I don't care. But I want to. Won't you help me? See, guys, it's this part where we start to, 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 to get ourselves being transferred or, or, or trans, trans, transfigured into the heart of Christ. It's what prayer is about. Because if all he's going to do is give you the way to get rich or the way to get over this sickness or, or this disease or whatever it might be, then he's not turning you into the heart of God. And everything, everything will work out good to them that are called to God. Everything will work out good to those that love him. Everything will work out good to those that are trying to walk according to him. Because we've been predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ, his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So this kingdom of God, this is where we get close, where we dare to go. And, and, and I need to ask and, and really ask you, do you do this? Or do you give up as soon as you start to ask? Do you give up on when he does? 
Because you're not seeing the fruits come about in your prayers, so you're done. Persistence. Somebody say persistence. That's what's going to be the biggest key. Yeah, your heart might be ugly, and yeah, there might be a lot of junk in it. I don't know one heart that isn't. I don't. Every one of us, every one of us, I don't care anybody that tries to teach you that you have a good heart. Scripture says that your heart's deceptively wicked. Who could know it? It's deceptively wicked. He comes in and gives us a new heart, and he is just taking us through a sanctification process. That sanctification process means he's birthing something. And this is good hope. This is good. Because what I see is there are seeds of the kingdom. So go with me to Matthew chapter 13. There are seeds of the kingdom that must be put out inside of us. And we got to understand that if we pray these seeds and we're coming to him with honesty, not this junk, this lying, deceptive stuff. He said, be honest. Confess your sins, which also means confess that you're sick. Confess that, you know what, you got an ailment here. I confess I got some fingers missing. I do. God can put them out there if he wants to. It's on him. You think I ain't got the faith for it? You're nuts. I got the faith that he could do anything because he's done anything. The biggest thing that he did is he took this heart that was missing and he gave me one. He took this hatred out and he gave me love. So you think the finger's too big? If he wants to put the finger there, it'll grow. If it won't, I could deal with it. I'm not going to do the thing that I usually do because Kim won't let me. So I'll just do this. So it's one of those things, yeah, I can't dig in there no more. I can't, and the other, you know, anyway. So I'm, I'm okay with it because I could glorify God with it or without it. I could pray, sing praises to him no matter how high I am or how low I am because I got great news. I'm praying for him, not for this. I'm praying that he would let this hand spiritually reach out and touch somebody that needs it to pull somebody up out. I'm praying that he uses me in a way that's going to glorify him and that he changes my character because he says it's better that I go into the kingdom of God missing a digit than it is to be cast into hell. So that tells me that what happens on my body parts, whether he heals me on this side or he heals me on the next, ain't got no bearing on my salvation, but what happens on my character has bearing on my salvation. So I don't know about you, but all this (laughs) stuff and flopping, I I want Jesus. I need Jesus. I need a change. I need a drastic change in my life. And the only one that can do it is Jesus. He can. Oh, and I'm going to tell you, an encounter, you want an encounter with Jesus? It's really simple. Jesus, I need to see you. And he'll show up just like that. That's what it is. Supernatural encounters happen constantly. How do we know this? Because we can see it. If you can't understand how a bird flies, then you're missing the supernatural encounter of God. If you can't understand how the sun rises and the moon, how this earth that's spinning so fast can actually sit there and we can look at each other, absolutely astounds me. That's a supernatural thing that you totally missed. Because to me, that's more powerful than God saying, get up from the dead. To me, that's more powerful than he raising this, letting his finger grow. Because this is something that's continuous, that's going and going. That's awesome. That's totally awesome. And he did it all for us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to show you something even a little bit more crazy. He's in you. Oh, some of you just totally went whoosh, right off your head. Almost like you got some skinhead head like mine and Brian and, and, and Todd. Yeah, 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 yeah. We might be skinheads, but you know, we got something deep going on in there. Yeah, yeah. It just slides down, goes in the ear, and down to the heart so it doesn't stay up there on your hair like y'all. It just goes straight in through. So Matthew chapter 13 speaks of something, and it's really pretty powerful to me. As Jesus is going about, and he's speaking about these, the, the parables and all this, we must understand, receive, and produce. And the only way that we can understand anything is if we pray about it and the Spirit of God leads us, right? Somebody say yes. All right, so as he's doing this, I don't, I, I, I'm going to touch this just a little bit because I want to go over to a couple other verses. But let's start right at verse 1 real quick. And I know I threw a curveball on them up there, so they're going to go to it. Yeah, I am so... Hey, it's Thanksgiving week, man. Isn't that good? How are you ready for football? I got a couple. I'm with you. I'm ready for God, though, with our football, right? Right. Let's put some Jesus in there. We're going to be praying our teams win, right? 
I'm right with you. So I'm going to be praying never ceasing. Trust me on some of my teams I need to pray for. Woo, in a whole lot of different areas. How many of you ready for some turkey? How about some stuffing? Mashed potatoes? Macaroni, yeah, there you go. Sweet potatoes? Yeah, gravy, yeah, because you got to sweat that out, you know. Yeah, you got to get it all out. How about family? What's your biggest prayer for Thanksgiving this year? That we're all what? All thankful for each other. Good. What else? Fill us up, Lord. Unity. Uh huh. What else? What is it? See a change in one of our families or all of the whole family? Yes. I'm believing that the biggest demon possessed person in my family, which is pretty much all of them, I'm believing that we're all going to get delivered. Right, I love you guys. I really do. So I know you're going to watch this. And if, if don't don't text mom, don't text her. Yeah, text me. I'll handle it. I truthfully believe that God's going to move upon our families this Thanksgiving because we're going to go into His courts with Thanksgiving and praise, and we're going to worship Him through what He's done. So I want to challenge you after I'm done with this. Just tech, just just checking on this. I want to challenge you to do something during your Thanksgiving, and something that I really want you to do. God wants you to do it. What are you thankful for? What's the biggest thing you're thankful for? What is it? I can't hear it. Life? Okay. Your God? Okay. Salvation? Church family? Friends? Family? What else? Is that it? The blood of Jesus washes away my sin. Nothing but the blood of. Okay, what else? Good health. Okay, that's good. That's good. Freedom. Good. Good. Nobody's. Yeah. There you go. Drop and change. Nobody's mentioned me yet. So I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm joking. All of those things. Yeah, but yeah, some people don't consider me family. Relationship, awesome. Let's keep these things moving. Do something a little bit crazy this Thanksgiving. Honestly, do something crazy. Take communion. As we get ready to take communion today, take the cups home with you. and take. You don't need some priest to come over or some pastor to go, now I'll pray over these. You know how to do it. Lord, honor of my heart. Lord, I ask that you just bless this, and you bless this time together, for it is you, the thanksgiving offering, that we're able to come together. And we thank you for the cup of the new covenant that means that you're going to wipe away our sins. It is you, from the stripes of Christ, that's going to make all things right. Even where there's ever any sickness, any disease, where there's relationships torn apart, you're going to bring them together to make them whole. Today, we celebrate you. And then after you're done with that, rip your bird open. Eat that bad boy. If you're eating ham, rip that bad boy open, too. Yeah, I like either one of them, so yeah, I can eat any. I'm, I'm not a big, big turkey fan, though, but man, we were somewhere, and they had uh, smoked turkey. Where was we? Huh? Man, that thing was like awesome. You couldn't even tell it was a bird. I'm like, yeah, this is good. I got to go back and get me some more, and I went up there, and it was gone. I'm like, man, the bird must have flew away. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so here we go. Let's go to this first one. Tried to stall till we got it till they got it there. So, the day that day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea, and a large crowd gathered him. So he had got into the boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was standing on the beach. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, "Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up." Stop right there for a second. Put your finger there. Verse four. Say this with me. In the name of Christ, I bind up and I cage any bird that will try to steal the seed of the kingdom of God in my heart. Amen. Others fell on rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang, they sprang up and because they had no depth of soil. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I declare my soil free of rocks. So all hindrances, all sins, 
be brought under the blood of Christ. And I command those things to go to dry places, never to return again. Amen. All right, then he goes on. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. Here we go. Put your finger there. In the name of Jesus, I declare every thorn to be laid by the axe on the ground. Not to struggle, not to choke, and not to hinder any of my fruit, any of my provisions. In Jesus' name, amen. And others fell on the good ground. Oh, yeah. On the good soil and yielded a crop, some, some 100, some 60, and some 30. Now, we're going to stop right there for a second. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus, my 30 has become 60. My 60 has become 100. I am fruitful. My days of being fruitless are over. I put it under the blood of Jesus. And anything under the blood of Jesus will produce life. Life everlasting. Not later, but now. In Jesus' name. Amen. See, we're starting to get to the point where now we're praying, we're taking Scripture, and we're applying it the way that we're supposed to. We're applying and we're telling the Lord we're not going to allow these enemies to come in to, to, to really wreck our life. Yes, this is an, a, a eschatological passage, but it's still a passage for our life. Some people will go and will have the seed of the kingdom. As soon as it is, it seems like it flew away, like it wasn't there. It's like, man, you were here. It's like, oh, that was a good word. What was that word he said again? Man, I just can't remember, right? It's because the, the, that bird, and the scripture speaks of this. That bird came and took those away. That bird coming from hell. It's actually a demonic force. And, and if you re finish reading this, you'll see that. And then he goes on to talk about being thrown on this ground that wasn't good. It was full of rocks. A lot of us, as soon as we start to hear the word, it starts to come against what we believe, right? It's like, I don't know if I like this. I don't know. I was taught this, and, and it wasn't right, and, and I should be able to do this. And, and it's like your sin is that big thing that's holding you from being fruitful into the Lord. Anybody ever been there? Right where you know the flow of God is? It's like that river is right there, but there's a dam. Anybody ever seen a dam? A water dam, they keep adding these rock or concrete, and they keep doing it to where it builds up that water, and that's what happens. Those rocks in our life will stop the flow, and prayer releases those rocks. Somebody say, the prayer will release those rocks. Then he goes on to talk about the other seeds of the kingdom. Those other things are thrown. They're thrown in there, but yet those, those thorns, and those thorns or those demonic oppressions in your life. It comes when, especially when we turn around and we find that the Lord is trying to speak to you and the person that we know speaking truth into our life is being accused of things not right. Accuser of the brethren. But see, those those little jabs. You can't believe him. Look at him. He doesn't even look like a pastor. What do you want to go to that church where they're, they're not a few hundred church? Or, oh, you don't want to go over there. There's not people running around screaming in tongues. There's not people laying out on the floor all the time. You don't, there's no move of God over there. Deliverance didn't happen on him. You know how I know brother and sister so so didn't get delivered because they weren't throwing up. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Those are the things that will stop where you won't receive the seed of the kingdom of God. Because if you receive, I love how Paul said this, you've received the word of God just as it was from us, the word of and from God himself. And you received it because of the prophets. You're going to receive that reward of the prophetic, and it's going to produce in you what it was meant to do, and it's going to produce a harvest. Somebody say a harvest of a hundredfold. I don't believe none of you. I don't. Because mm -mm. if you truthfully wanted a hundredfold, you said a harvest of a hundredfold. There we go. There we go. Some of you are getting it. We don't want to do that. We're in church. Okay. 
So then he goes on, and so Jesus, he continues on, he starts talking about what these things are. He starts talking about what's happening to the seed, and then he goes on to the, the wheat and the tares, and he talks about how the, the Son of Man went about and he sowed the seeds, which is us, the kingdom of God, the people of the kingdom. And the evil one had turned about and sowed seeds, which is the sons of disobedience, the children of darkness. So here's the best way to say it, and I just prayed this just, just up in the leader's meeting. Honestly, not everybody in church is truthfully born again. Not every Christian is a Christian, and not every prophet is a prophet. Not every apostle is an apostle, not every pastor is a pastor, not every teacher is a teacher, not every evangelist is an evangelist. You will know them by their fruits, and their fruits will be long-lasting, not superficial when it got you, oh, look at that. No, 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 no. You will know because it will line up with the Scripture, and the Scripture will be manifest because Jesus Christ is the Word that was manifest from the beginning. I change not, he says. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. My words will never be changed. I will do the very same thing. When he says he does a new thing, he's talking about a new thing in your life, not thing, not nothing new contrary to Scripture. This is how we gauge what's happening. So our prayers should always be to Scripture, always be through Scripture, and should always be scriptural. Always. And man, when they do, all hell stops. Well, how do we know that? Because that's exactly what Jesus did. When the enemy had a hold of him, and he was trying to say, listen, I'm not saying you're not the Son of God, but if you are, what are you hungry for? Because you're supposed to be the Son of God. You should never be hungry. Anybody ever heard that? Never be sick? You should never be worrying about finances? You should never struggle a day in your life. Have you ever heard that? It's called the prosperity message. And I'm going to tell you what, if, you were, if you're looking for that, you're in the wrong house. Because you're going to get the biblical truth. It's going to put it to you plain and simple. Yeah. And it tells me that you're going to struggle. It tells me you're going to be hungry. Matter of fact, it tells me that some of you are going to be homeless. But it tells me that God's going to take care of you. It tells me that no matter what you need, he's going to provide for you because you're walking in the way that he wants you and needs you to walk. That's what it says. He's going to help you whether you get healed here or you get healed on the other side. He's going to help you no matter how deep the battle of demonics that you got to go. God is there with you. Lord, if I make my bed in Sheol forever, you are there. Lord, if I'm up high up on the mountain forever, you are there too. God, where can I go to escape the presence of who you are? God says, I am there, and I will never. Somebody say never. I will never leave you. Oh, praise glory to God. Man, I want to, you talk about starting to run, and I don't want to do none of that other stuff. I just want to run, praise the Lord. Yeah, help me. So let me go on. Because, see, you're getting a word. Somebody say getting a word. And you've got to keep going. Yeah. The devil right now is trying to tell you. I can guarantee you because I can hear it. I can hear what the Lord said. The devil has fooled you. He's deceived you to make you think that that word wasn't for you because it's not producing something in you. Matter of fact, the devil's trying to tell you that you're not God's. You're not producing something. Well, you just kicked that split foot right in the head. And you tell him, the Lord in me rebuke you. Say that with me. The Lord in me. No, no, say it again. The Lord in me rebuke you. See, we must go back to Jude. We must understand that Jude, the Mar Michael the archangel, who was the strongest of all angels, sat there and said, I dare not cast a railing accusation against you, but the Lord rebuke you. See, if we try to stand up and say, we Jesus, that's what messes everything up. I got news for you. We ain't Jesus. His spirit lives inside of us, yes, and we can do all things that he allows according to his will. And if we sat there and we want to resist him, he didn't say rebuke him, he said resist him, didn't he? But see, now, if we're walking in Jesus, it's the Lord rebuke you. And if he's being rebuked because of the Lord inside of us, that thing ain't got nothing to do but flee. I like that. I like that a lot. Because there's plenty of days. Well, I think it's every day. I wake up, and as soon as I'm praying to the Lord, the first thing that comes out of my mind, really, and out of my heart, my spirit for the Lord, honestly, is good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Ghost. Good morning, saints. Good morning, angels and watchmen. I say that all the time. It's going to be a good day. And then I get up and I go and look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, ain't got no hair. <laughs> I get up and I look in the mirror and right off the bat, the devil wants to start to show you the imperfections. Anybody ever do that? I know some of you look so pretty, you don't have to worry about that. But I just, some of you, you need to go back and grab a hold of this. You do. Yeah. The only ones, well, anyway, I don't want to go there. So as you do this and the devil's trying to show you where you're going to mess up, mm -mm -mm -mm. the Lord rebuke you. 
In the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. And because he lives inside of me, I rebuke you and I command you to go to those dry places never to return again. Oh, that's powerful. Because, see, now it's not your words. It's not you rebuking him, but it's God that's doing it. See, that's the powerful thing. It's got to be. Do you think that, honestly, you think Elijah would just be able to go over there and say, okay, fire, fall, come on, come on, without hearing a word of the Lord? Scripture says he had to get the word of the Lord. He could not do that. He didn't go around there having barbecues everywhere he went. He didn't. He had to get the voice of the Lord and say, okay, today we're going to have a barbecue. We're going to invite all the rest of them in. You're going to give them the last supper, too, because we're getting ready to kill them all. So he did, and everything that we hear God telling us to do, we do. What do you think Jesus did? I don't do anything unless the Father, I see the Father, or the Father tells me to do it. Right? we got to go in prayer. Somebody say in prayer. And we go in prayer according to his word, according to his will. It'll be done to us. And then we have the anointing. We have the power to see it through. Amen. So some of you right now, you're just listening to this because you know. How many of you know that you got a little seed of the kingdom in you? Anybody? Yeah. How many of you know, honestly, that you got a word today that was a seed for the kingdom of God inside your heart? Yeah? Yeah? So it's, here's what's going to happen. You're going to look down. You're going to even see 30. You're not going to see 30, but i got news for you. Wait. Just hold up. Don't give up because it's getting ready to produce something strong. Look with me here. Let's go to verse 30, 31. This is where the Lord starts to get down and he starts to talk about what the kingdom of God is like. And we can't do this without prayer. we got to have prayer with this. And it says, He presented another parable to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field. And this is the smallest of all the other seeds, but when it is fully grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Isn't that awesome? So the seed of the kingdom of God, I'm not going to go here, I want to wait here. The seed of the kingdom of God that has been planted in your heart today, and it's been planted in your heart for years, God's starting to let it grow, and it's going to be a huge tree. See, that was so crazy, because that mustard seed was one of the smallest seeds of all, but the trees were one of the biggest trees at all. So this is what God's saying, don't you give up. Don't you stop praying. Don't you stop watering this. You grab a hold of that seed, and you keep praying that seed, and you keep praying. Expect the big things, but look at the small things. Oh, it might look like it's not going somewhere. Anybody been there? Man, I know I'm speaking to somebody today. There's somebody that's been praying, and somebody that's been wanting, it just seems like things aren't happening. I'm telling you right now, God is about to really show you that you've got a mass of a tree here. And you're going to see people come. And what's so amazing is when this seed of the kingdom, and you allow this to go, if you allow it to come underneath the prayers of the Lord, as it grows, people are going to come, and they're going to see peace in you. They're going to see Jesus in you. And everything that you need is going to be right there. And everything that they need is going to be right there. Because God says, no matter how old you are, you're going to be planted right there at that river. And at that river, you're going to flourish and you're going to bear fruit. And it's going to keep producing fruit. And it's going to keep producing fruit. And it's going to keep producing fruit, not just for you, but for everybody around. And I declare over top of your life today that people from all over the world, every person you run into today, Every person that you're going to run in contact with, they're going to come up and grab a hold of some of that fruit. And they're going to see their life change. There's going to be a healing inside of them. Because they're going to see that tree that's inside of you was cut out of something called the cross. And that cross, that wood that had that, is the very same thing they're going to get from you. And they're going to see the power in which to need. And they're going to do it because you had intimacy with the Lord. They're going to do it because you have a relationship with him through prayer. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Y'all can look at me funny if you want. Praise the Lord. But I'm jacked up. Oh, I ain't allowed to say that word. I'm, I'm, woo. I think I'm more hyped up than McGregor getting ready to fight. Mm, man. I'm just ready to, to I'm, I want to see the world change. I want to see her like it. I need to be honest with you. If I'm not walking in prayer, if I'm not walking in this, my relationship, my life starts to do this. If I'm not feeding my heart, I'm not feeding my spirit, and I'm not allowing, because, see, it's part of this breaking these things off so God can do it in me. It is. But now I need to go to here. Before I hit these next four, which I promise won't be too much longer, you need to pray for other people. 
you need to pray. Some people think that they have the lock. They have the, 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 the key. They're, they're, they're the only master behind like the, the gifts of the Spirit and the word of wisdom and knowledge. Well, i got news for you. There's one person that has got the lock, the master on that, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he wants to give it to everybody. Somebody say, I'm going to receive it. Now, you really need to say it. I mean, because you're not really saying it. You're like, do you really want to receive these gifts? The gift giver is Father. And it comes through the source of Jesus Christ. And it comes through that source by a power of the Holy Ghost that will rise up in you. But if we, if we, if we start to line up right, we will start to give word of knowledge that is accurate. Aren't you tired of getting these words of knowledge that's got a little bit of truth and it takes you way over here? Aren't you tired of these people praying deliverance on you and you got a little bit of emotional but you didn't get delivered? Aren't you tired of people trying to babysit you through a problem instead of giving you the cure for the problem? Aren't you? See, it's time that we get ourselves lined up, and you won't get that if you're not lining up with him. And this is part of praying. Lord, give me a word. Help me to help my brother or my sister. See, it's in the midst of praying, in the midst of, of working and ministering unto the Lord through his people that God will deliver you. He will heal you. He will save you. That's what he does. I can't tell you the countless of times that me and Kim has prayed for healing over people and just watch their, their, them be healed and then turn around and we get it. I can't tell you how many times we've taken people through deliverance. And taking them through deliverance, we turn around and, and as we do, we start to fill it in ourselves. Oh, there was a little hold up there. There's a little hold up here. Well, the Lord took me to a passage this past week. And I've been dealing with some things in my heart. And it's, Lord, help me. You know, I, I, get, I can become a little bit critical at times. I can not me, really. Right? Why did you not say, no, not you, Pastor? It's like, yeah, we know, right? Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Lord. But anyway, I could become critical, and I could become very, you already know that I'm bold, but I can be to the point where, man, I want to knock it right out of you. I, I just, I don't want to wait for the sanctification. I want to be the sanctification process. Have you ever been there? You're just tired of dealing with them, so you want to elbow them, right? Patrick, I ain't seen you. i got to give you quite a few elbows here. Yeah, yeah, I'm just joking. If you're lucky, your wife's over there with you. <laughs> anyway, let's just go back to it. So it's, it's one of these things to where, where I'm asking the Lord to help me. So I was, was meeting with a person, and we were going through some things, and, and there's been a lot of false prophets and the false prophetesses rise up lately. They're speaking words on Facebook, and they're speaking words against this church or against that church and against this denomination and that denomination. Here's where I need to tell you, I was there before, and some of you know that. I've come to find out that in the midst of my zeal for to see the Lord operate, I find that the devil used it more than God. So that critical spirit rose up, and I became a spirit of Diotrephus that we find in the epistles of John and started to say, this is how it's got to be. And without even knowing about it, I got caught. So when I was talking with this woman, we were going to addressing some of these issues, and there's a woman that, that this, this other lady, um, it, she's a great woman, man. She's one of my intercessors. She's a great lady. And she's just been just jammed. She did something wrong. Anybody ever do anything just wrong in your life? Anybody? Okay, so all the rest of you were really good? Really? Man, I'm trying to see because I think there's some glory shining. That must be, that might be Jesus I think I'm looking at. Yeah, right. Well, some people, and this is how you truthfully know if it's somebody of God. If they're not of God, they're going to go dig up your past. They're going to go try to find it, and they're not trying to cover it with love and grace, but they're trying to exploit it. And why? To make themselves look good. And man, David, me and Kim was in a study, and it was a word, wasn't it? I mean, it struck me so bad, I, I started, whew. It was hitting me, and the Lord was beating up on me. I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. Got into the midst of it. He says, to touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm, right? Well, you're not as anointed. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. So, but he's talking about some things of the heart. So David and Samuel 
1 Samuel chapter 24. He rises up and, and he goes over and, and, and Saul's put right in front of him. And as Saul's put in front of him, one of his strong men, which means it was somebody who was like a brother to him, said, look, God has put him, your enemy, right in your path. And he was like, shut up, man. So he reached over there and he clipped off the, just a, a little bit of his robe. Didn't want to touch him, didn't want to hurt him, but he just clipped off a piece of his robe. And you know what scripture says about that? You'd have figured he said, I could have had you, right? And do we, we hear that, don't we? I could have had you. Is that not right? But we missed that part because that's not how it was. Because what it says is after he did that, his heart smote him. His heart convicted him because he did what wasn't right. How dare we rail, make a railing accusation? How dare we take the things of God and try to become judge? Try to become the one that's going to wreak the havoc? Ah. Oh. What makes us try to tell God that his bride's ugly? You tell me my bride's ugly. Come on, just do it once. Just do it once. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I got, see, I got the police behind me. He could come up here and he could back me up. You can have any gun you want to, that's fine. In the name of Jesus, that thing's going to turn around and shoot you in the head anyway. Ricochet, ding, 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 ding. But see, that's the same way Jesus feels. And we want to turn around and say all this. The fruit of somebody that's of the Lord won't be about that. It's going to be about let's cover and let's pray. Man, when I saw that and me and Kim started studying, I said, Lord, I wasn't walking in integrity because this is where it goes, to the integrity. We must pray with integrity. Pray with integrity. And as I was doing it, me and Kim was studying, I, I texted this lady and, and I said, man, i got to talk to you, so call me later. And she did you know, later on and and uh, we talked, and, and we right away prayed, and we covered it. And this man, because we didn't cover him. We talked about the situation and talked about where the discernment was coming in so we could get discernment, but we never prayed over the situation. So that left an opening for the devil to come in and start to destroy something. Guys, that's not good. If ever you're in a teaching, if ever you're in a place, and all they're doing is bashing the body of Christ, stop. Get out. Don't stay. Don't stay. Run. Run as fast as you can. Because the enemy is trying to lure you into a trap. He's trying to get you so deep inside that where when you start to pray something, because your mind is listening and your, your thinking is jaded, your prayers will be jaded, and before you know it, your prayers won't hit the ceiling. They won't get up to God, but they will reach the ears of the demonic, and they will reach the ears of the darkness, and they will start to produce a curse instead of a blessing. This is why we bless those who curse us. We pray for those that are doing wrong. God is looking for us to stand in the gap. Prayer is about getting the heart of God. Today's that day. Today is. So pray. Pray never ceasing. Never ceasing. Let's go through these other ones real quick so I can close this real fast. So first one is we offer prayer from the heart. We don't worry about having this great big, I, I'm tired of hearing this too. It, you got to have this formula. This is how you do this formula. This is the words that you say. Well, pastor, I'd love to pray, but I can't pray like you. Well, you ain't supposed to pray like me. You're supposed to pray like you. You're supposed to pray what the Holy Spirit put in you. He's made you who you are, the way that you talk, the way everything. He's made that that way, so glorify him through that. Pray through him with it. You get that. He goes on with this. Yeah. Well, the Lord already knows our hearts, so we don't have to craft any perfect prayer. The second one is say amen sparingly. Pray continuously. As he tells us this in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, he tells us to keep praying. Keep praying. Man, I love it. I'll be driving down a road, and I hardly ever say amen. Hardly ever. It's just, Jesus, man, I thank you, Lord, you're doing this. Jesus, I thank you that you're rising up in today. Jesus, I thank you that whose hand I touch today, they're going to feel the power of your kingdom. They're going to feel the power of the cross. They're going to feel the power of the resurrection. And they're going to know the their warmth of the blood of Jesus today. And, man, as I pray that, I don't say amen. I go on, and I just keep going, and I keep going because, man, I could be walking through a store, and God's putting something else on me, and that I've got to finish praying. I hardly ever want to say amen. Man, I just want to keep going. Amen? Some of you got it. Okay. All right, so the third thing is don't do all the talking. Make sure you shut up a bit. Yeah. I can't ever get Kim to quit. She just talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. Okay, Jeremiah 33.3 3 says, call on me, and I will answer you, 
and I will tell you the great and mighty things that you do not know. Which means you need to shut up. Remember we were talking about all those, you know, what's up, we're banging on those symbols and all that? Remember that? That's pretty good, right? See, it's the same thing. We're so busy talking that we're making those symbols and we can't hear him speak back. So just shut up for a bit. Prayer isn't always having to get up and have a word. Praying really is getting yourself lined up to God to hear him. Fasting does that same thing. Fasting gets us to the point where we're sensitive to hear the voices of the Lord so we can get him to go through. All right, then the next thing, the fourth or last thing, is to keep a prayer journal. Write down the things that God's showing you, the things that you pray, and the things that he's answered. Because you need to build a Nebuchadnezzar. You need to build a place. You need to build something where you could keep going, where you could keep going, and you could keep going, and you could keep going. See, this is what God wants to do, church. God's trying to bring us to a point where he's taken us all the way into an intimacy with him where we'll know what to pray by the smell that he has. Have you ever smelt him? I love John G. Lake. It's one of my favorite quotes most of you know, and I hope you guys will start quoting it sometimes. People ought to smell like prayer. When's the last time, go ahead, Michael, when's the last time that you guys smelt like prayer? When's the last time that you walked out of a prayer room or walked out of your house there for that day, getting ready to go into the, to, the, to, to the place where you're working or wherever you're going, shopping or school, whatever it might be, and people go, man, what you got on today? That's called aroma of Jesus. When's the last time? When's the last time somebody was drawn to you because they could smell that prayer? Just like Danny smells steaks. When's the last time? Guys, don't you want that? Don't you? Uh, honestly, I know there's times where Kim will put that stink party stuff on, you know, and, and we'll be sent because we're always close together, right? I mean, honestly, we just are. And then there's times where I'll leave her and, and I'll, be, I'll be in my meeting. Man, I don't stink. I smell good. And they're like, man, did you use deodorant today? It's like, yeah, but you don't want none of this. Oh, yeah. Jay, why y'all looking at me like that? It's true. You get that, uh, that aroma, that fragrance. And you know what it reminds me of? Her. So when you're in the midst of that prayer, and I smell it, I smell God. Even when it's really bad. Even when I smell all that sulfur and brimstone all around me, I smell God. Because He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He will always be there. I smell God. So when you're sitting there today, or, or this week, and you're getting ready to do your Thanksgiving dinner. What are you going to smell? The turkey or God? I pray that some of you go down and you start to help with the, the feeding this week. I do. I really do. And as you do, don't smell the stench. Smell God. When you look at a situation, it feels like it's dead. Maybe there is a relationship that feels like it's been dead for years. You're smelling death. You need to pray to you till you smell God.